This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by NHLiberty.org. President Obama announced his choices for key national security posts this week, and there has been both celebration and gnashing of teeth in Washington and around the country. There is widespread belief that either or both of these nominees will have an immediate and profound effect on U.S. policy. However, this belief is really just a mistaken overemphasis on personnel over policy. We should not forget that cabinet secretaries serve the president and not the other way around. Many who object to our continued foreign policy of endless war and empires overseas, encouraged by Obama's choice of Senator Hagel to head the Defense Department, Hagel has shown some admirable willingness to advise caution overseas. He is seen as unenthusiastic over the prospects of a U.S. war on Iran, which is certainly to be welcomed. But let us not forget that he did vote for the war against Iraq. He has expressed support for multilateral sanctions on Iran. And last year he wrote in the Washington Post ad on Iran, he supports, quote, keeping all options on the table, including the use of military force, close quote. Nevertheless, because he does represent a more moderate voice in foreign policy than the neoconservatives can tolerate, they are dragging his name through the mud in choosing Hegel then. We can hope the president is signaling that he will pursue a less aggressive foreign policy in his second term. We cannot count on it. At the same time, the president has chosen as Central Intelligence Agency director a man who is considered the author of Obama's destructive drone warfare policy and who, as such, has been in charge of the president's secret kill list that has already claimed the lives of three American citizens. He claimed in 2011 that there were no collateral deaths from the U.S. drone attacks on Pakistan, which is simply not believable. We also should not forget that as then CIA Director George Tenet's right-hand man during the Bush administration, Brennan was certainly involved in the manufactured intelligence and lies that led the U.S. to attack Iraq. The real problem is in placing too much emphasis on the person the president hires to carry out his foreign policy and defense policy as it ignores that of policy itself. If the president has decided to continue or even expand U.S. military action overseas through more covert warfare and use of special operation forces, which seems to be the case, it will matter little who he chooses to carry out those policies. If the president decides to continue to provide support to rebels in Syria or have dubious ties to Islamic extremists, to continue to meddle in the internal affairs of countless countries overseas, to continue to refuse to even talk with Iran without preconditions, and so on, we will not see a return to foreign policy sanity no matter who occupies what position in the president's cabinet. So we should be optimistic that the president may see the wisdom in pursuing a foreign policy that is truly in our national interest, but we should always keep an eye on the policies over the personnel. It is said, or certainly could be said, hell hath no fury like a well-intentioned government. Well, I don't know how good the intentions are over here, but I can tell you that the folks at the State House in Concord, New Hampshire, are not interested in protecting your freedom for the most part. They're taking it away, piece by piece. Fortunately, unlike in most states, they're not doing it without a fight. That is in large part due to the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance at nhliberty.org. Now, if you were to go into the State House there behind me and do this, you would hit one of the members of the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance because they're in there all over the place fighting for your freedom. They also offer free training if you want to learn the ways of the citizen freedom lobby. Visit them at nhliberty.org. <laughs>